Hello everyone, this is Pastor Sean from Christians Unite, and this is another edition of Reading Through the Bible. Good evening everyone. On today's Reading Through the Bible, we're going to be looking at Hebrews chapter 7. Um, last week I was away on vacation, I'm back now, so we'll start doing our weekly videos again. Uh, thank you for being patient with us. Um, so we'll, let's get to it. Chapter 7. The priest Melchizedek. This Melchizedek was king of Salem and a priest of the Most High God. As Abraham was coming back from the battle in which he killed the kings, Melchizedek met him and blessed him. Abraham gave him one-tenth of everything he had. The first meaning of Melchizedek's name is king of righteousness, and because he was the king of Salem, his name also means king of peace. There is no record of Melchizedek's father or mother or any of his ancestors, nor record of his birth or his death. He is like the Son of God. He remains a priest forever. You see, then, how great he was. Abraham, the patriarch, gave him one-tenth of all he got in his battle. And those descendants of Levi, who are the priests of commanded by law to collect one-tenth from the people of Israel, that is, they collected from their own countrymen, even Melchizedek was not descended from Levi, but he collected one-tenth from Abraham and blessed him who received God's promises. There is no doubt that the one who blesses is greater than the one who is blessed. In this case of Melchizedek, the tenth was collected by one who lives, as the scripture says. And so to speak, when Abraham paid the tenth, Levi, whose descent collected the tenth also paid it for Levi had not yet been born but was so to speak in the body of his ancestor Abraham when Melchizedek met him it was on the basis of Levitical priesthood that the law was given to the people of Israel now if the work of the Levitical priest had been perfect there would have been no need for a different kind of priest to appear and who is the priestly order of Melchizedek, not in Aaron's order. For when the priesthood in, is changed, there also has to be a change of the law. And our Lord of whom these things are said belong to different tribe. And no member of his tribe ever served as a priest at the altar. It is well known that we were born members of the tribe of Judah. And Moses did not mention this tribe when he spoke of priests. So this chapter 7, uh, this first part, shows a history of the priesthood. Um, also, it shows that it's not perfect, but this is what they used in the Old Testament days. Verse 15, another priest like Melchizedek. The matter became even plainer. A different priest had appeared who is like Melchizedek. He was not made a priest by human rules and regulations. He became a priest through the power of a life which had no end. For the scripture says, You will be a priest forever and ever, and the priest the order of Melchizedek. The old rule then is set aside because it was weak and useless. For the law of Moses could not make anything perfect. And now a better hope he has been brought in, through which he came near to God. In addition, there is also a God vow. There was no such vow when the others were made priests, but Jesus became a priest by vow, means of a vow. When God said to him, The Lord has made a vow and will not change his mind. You will be a priest forever. The difference then makes Jesus the guarantee also a better covenant. There is another difference. Those other priests were mainly because they this they died and could not continue the work. But Je Jesus lives on forever and ever, and his work as a priest does not pass on to someone else. And so he is able, now and always, to save those who come to God through him, because he lives forever to plead with God for them. Jesus, then, is the high priest that meets our needs. He is holy. He has no fault or sin in him. 
He has been set apart from the sinful men and raised above the heavens. He is not like the other high priest. He does not need to offer sacrifices every day for his own sin first, and then for the, the sins of the people. He offered one sacrifice once and for all. When he offered himself, the law of Moses appointed men who are imperfect to be high priests. But the word of God's vow, which came later than the law appointed the sons, who had been made perfect forever. So chapter 7 is showing two stories. The priesthood of man, which had several priests that died. So there continually had to be different priests. However, when Jesus died on the cross and became our intercessor with God, that was the final priesthood that we needed because he never dies. He lives forever because he has already risen. So we no, no, no longer need to sacrifice for sins because Jesus Christ was our sacrifice. Thank you for listening to this edition of Reading Through the Bible. We will uh, begin on chapter 6 next.